hallo. Hallo, ich heiße Greg Hankins, bin hier mit meinen Kollegen von der Alcatel Lucent da. Wir rennen hier in der Gegend rum. Ich bin eigentlich Amerikaner. Vielleicht wisst ihr, dass ich hier in der Gegend aufgewachsen bin, in Groß-Gerau. Also ich freue mich sehr, wieder mal in Deutschland zu sein und einen Vortrag zu geben. Aber ähm, ihr habt heute Glück, weil ähm, ich den Vortrag auf Englisch gebe <lacht> und ich mich mein Deutsch nicht anhören muss. Okay, ähm, Markus, gibt es auf dem äh, Laptop auch oder nie, nur da oben? Weil ich bin ja jetzt etwas älter und kann nicht so gut sehen. So, uh, thanks, and we'll just uh, continue in English. I always like to, to open uh, with a picture, a historical picture, and I like to remind people that Ethernet is now uh, over 40 years old. So, uh, it's quite amazing that this technology has come from uh, such slow speeds, and now we're talking about speeds like 100 and 400, and we'll see a terabit Ethernet in the future. So, I think it's always really interesting to remember where we came from. Uh, there's a lot going on with Ethernet, and usually I give this presentation in English, and there's about 50 slides in 30 minutes, so I'm going to try and slow down a little bit so that uh, everyone can follow along, and unfortunately there's a lot of terminology and Fachbegriffe that are kind of uh, a little bit complicated. So we'll talk about speed evolution, and then we'll talk about the different speeds that we're working on, and I'll give you an update on what's going on with each of these different speeds. Let's look at the uh, Ethernet evolution over the past 40 years. There is a bunch of new different market requirements, and these are changing the Ethernet speeds in terms of the speed itself, the distance, and the cost. And what we're now seeing is we have new markets that need different speeds that we haven't had before. So for example, a two and a half and a five gig Ethernet, a 25 gig Ethernet, and a 400 gig Ethernet. And the interesting thing is, if you look at this roadmap, We've done about six speeds in the past 30 years. We're considering doing six new speeds in the next couple of years. So we're doing the same amount of speeds in the next few years that we've done in the past 30 years. So I think uh, at first you can look at it and say uh, that there's a lot going on and maybe it's a little bit messy with all the different speeds. But as you'll see, there's actually really good reasons why to do each of these speeds and, and why we actually need a different speed. The key application drivers, and these are just the key applications. This is where we think the majority of the applications will be. It doesn't mean that you can't use this technology in, in different areas. So the new speeds are two and a half and five gig ethernet, primarily for wireless and the large installed base of copper cabling. We have a new 25 gig ethernet speed, primarily for data center access. There is more ethernet interfaces available for 40 and 100 gig now, which are for data center and core. We're also working on a new 400 gig ethernet, primarily for core applications. Let's look at each of these in a little bit more detail, and I'll tell you all about them. The market drivers for two and a half and five giggy are primarily wireless access speeds. So we have wireless access points with 802.11 AC now that can go up to about seven gigabits capacity but the backhaul on the wired side is only limited to one gigabit. So you can see there's a pretty big bottleneck there. The rule of thumb is that you need about 75% of the maximum wireless speed on the wired side in order to do that backhaul. So if you do the math, you come out pretty easily to speeds of two and a half and five gig. And of course, we also need to do these over Cat5e and Cat6, and power over Ethernet is also a requirement for this application. The other market driver really is a large installed cabling base of Cat5, Cat5e, and Cat6. I remember I started networking several years ago. My first job was to rewire a building with Cat5e, and that was uh, in the early 90s. So if you think about over the past 10, 20, 30 years how much copper cabling has been installed, it's a massive amount. The IEEE cites a couple different cabling studies. There's one that was done from 2003 to 2016, which is cited at the URL below. It reports that there were 58 billion meters sold in 2014. That's about 90% or almost 1.3 million of the installed outlets are Cat5e or Cat6. And the really interesting thing is that data centers 
uh, was only about 4% of this. So if you think about every conference building, every hospital, every office building, every apartment building, there's a lot of, of Cat 5e and Cat 6 cabling that's installed. And there are more applications beyond wireless. There's applications for high-speed desktop, small cell, uh, mobile security cameras that use high def and all sorts of different applications. So all these are leading us to a new speed that's being developed in the IEEE for two and a half gig and five gig. There's gonna be two new standards, 2.5 G base T and 5 G base T, which will both run under 100 meter Cat 5e or Cat 6. The other thing that they're working on also is a multi-G auto negotiation. So this auto negotiates between two and a half all the way up to 40 G base T. The other interesting things are uh, automatic MDI, MDIX configuration, so no more worrying about a crossover cable, and it also supports the high power PoE, that's four pair PoE for um, those high power devices that you need to connect at the end of a cable. This is gonna be a really fast standard. We're already um, well underway to generate the draft and the task force. We expect the standard in, at the end of this year in 2000, I'm sorry, end of next year in 2016, and then also interfaces on the market sometime next year. For each of these developments, I have a bunch of different URLs that I don't usually mention. You can go to the IEEE webpage and, and read, all about, read all about it. All those things are open. Now, the other interesting thing that's going on is that a study group was just formed in July, which will look into a backplane and very short reach for copper, copper cable interfaces. Now, the interesting thing here is that it's going to be designed for storage. I'm not a storage expert, maybe some of you are, but there's something called object storage, which is now some new storage technologies. And what they're talking about doing is replacing the electrical interfaces on hard disk drives, so be it SCSI or you know, IDE or whatever, and actually putting a two port ethernet interface directly onto the hard disk drive. So it would just talk ethernet to the storage system or, or whatever it's connected to. So that's kind of a, a very cool application, I think. There's two industry groups that are driving also um, two and a half and five gig E. They were at first developing competing standards, but now they've agreed to do one standard in the IEEE, so there's just gonna be one standard. But these groups are promoting the use and the marketing of this new speed. There's the MG based T technology, which is basically Broadcom and a bunch of people. Then there's the N based T alliance, which is basically not Broadcom and a bunch of other people. So um, I'm glad that these these two groups came to an agreement in the IEEE and that there's just gonna be one standard. Okay, moving on to 25 gig E. This is an interesting one um, because of the way that the math works out and I'll show you uh, in a couple of slides. The idea here is to provide a server connection speed so it's really targeted at servers and data center aggregation that's faster than 10 gig that's also optimized for cost throughput and efficiency. Efficiency is a big, um, is a big uh, let me move that, is a big uh, target here and again, I'll show you on the next slide. We're already using a bunch of 25 gig signaling technology already today. 100 gig uses it, uh, Cowie 4 uses it. All these different new media types already use it. And we also see it in 100 gig QSFP28 to 25 gig SFP28 breakout. Now you say, what about 40 gig? Well, there's a couple things about 40 gig. First of all, 40 gig was designed uh, in about 2008. So the technology is coming up on, on about you know, six or eight years old now. Uh, it uses signaling that we could use back then that was efficient. It turns out now it's inefficient compared to what the technology does today. So the four by 10 gig signaling is inefficient. It also has a higher cost optic compared to the SFP28. And again, there's different market requirements. So 40 gig may be a great speed for some applications. Other applications uh, really need 25 gig. Here's uh, the, the justification. There's gonna be a lot of 3.2 terabit chips on the market coming out, probably shipping now or this fall or, or later uh, by winter and spring next year. So everything is really designed around these capacities of 3.2 terabits and probably future capacity of 6.4 terabit chips. If you look at the math and use signaling of four times 10 or one times 25, you can see that with 25 gig signaling, the math works out a bunch better so that you have more efficient utilization. You can actually use the full throughput of 3.2 terabits on these chips. And then if you abstract that a little more and think about building very large data center networks um, with hierarchies and, and cloth fabrics and things like that, if you wanted to have um, a, a server connections for 100,000 servers using top of rack switches, uh, if you use 40 gig, you need about 3,500. If you use 25 gig, 
you only need just over a thousand. So there's a lot of efficiency that we get in the in the switch itself and also in the, in the bigger network. In terms of developments, there's a couple things that are being developed in the IEEE. There's 25 G-based T. This one just decided to combine their effort with the 40 G-based T task force, so there was no need to do a separate project. They're just gonna do that standard together and that'll come out as 802.3BQ. Uh, there's no change uh, expected in the schedule and we expect the standard in the spring of next year in March. The copper and fiber optic cables, this is where there's a lot more development and I realize that this is a very dense slide so let me just um, kind of walk you through here. Um, this is a low latency application and when you're doing low latency applications, the FEC or the forward error correction really matters because as you can see in this table, FEC adds a lot of latency. On the other hand, it also gives you a much better bit error rate. So there's a trade-off between adding latency with the FEC or possibly having a lossy bit error rate um, without effect at the cost of latency. This is something that the project is trying to support in that they have a different combination of cables and reaches that all support either no FEC, the base R FEC, or the RS FEC. So you can choose, depending on what your application wants, you'll be able to choose the latency characteristics and the bit error rate characteristics of your Ethernet connection. And that's why there's so many different uh, options here. Um, the working group is, is moving right along. This will also be a, a quick standard, so we expect the standard next year in the fall and also uh, interfaces on the market sometime next year in the fall. Now, there is a competing or an alternative standard that's done by the 25 gig Ethernet consortium. This is founded after the CFI, which is the CFI is the way that you start something in the IEEE. So they had an initiative in the IEEE and it was, it was not successful, it failed, so they went off and did their own thing they're doing an alternative and a proprietary Ethernet interface that supports 50 and 25 gig, but it's not the IEEE standard interface, so it won't be compatible. Unfortunately, I can't tell you what's in the specification. The specification is only open to members, and I'm not a member, so uh, it's not available to me, but this is what they're doing. I have technology reference slides. I'll explain the first one. I have this for each of the technologies, but I don't talk through them because it ends up being very, very boring. But you can remember that these are there if you ever need to know anything about uh, any sort of Ethernet technology. Um, the 25 gig is going to come out in an SFP28 form factor. It's exactly the same size as SFP and SFP+. It just supports higher speeds. So it's very easy to see that you can have auto negotiation back to uh, 10 gig or 1 gig even because it's all the same uh, module factor. And then I have uh, the different standards and when we expect it on the market and the different uh, media and module types for each of the technologies. Okay, let's move on to 40 gig. Uh, 40 gig, there's not a whole lot to say. 40 gig is, is kind of done and I think we have everything we need. We've had the QSFP plus form factor for a while now. It's a high density form factor. It's used in a bunch of other technologies, Ethernet, uh, fiber channel, and Finiband, so it's not just for Ethernet. Uh, we use it for Ethernet. It supports uh, 40 gig and also is very popular as a, a 40 to 10 uh, gig breakout. We have a bunch of different pluggable modules. We have modules for the aggregation and core, which are native 40 gigs. So we have a short range and now a long range interface up to 40 kilometers. We also have a variety of different breakout cables. So this is really popular to do 40 gig to four times 10 gig breakout, either over copper or some sort of fiber interface. There's not a whole lot of developments. Um, really the one is 40 G base T, which I told you about. And then there's the 40 kilometer interface, which came out in February of, of this year today, uh, already this year. So that's available today. And uh, there's not a whole lot more to say about 40 gig. I think it's mature technology and it's uh, widely available on the market. Here's a reference slide that I'll skip through. The next one is 100 gig and this is where it really gets interesting and this one is worth spending some time on. Uh, if you look at the adoption life cycle of the 100 gig technology, I think now we're finally at that point where we're gonna see a mass market adoption for 100 gig. This is really driven by two things. Number one is that 3.2 terabit chip that I mentioned that a lot of system vendors are gonna start shipping. And the other thing is the QSFP28 and the CFP4 form factors. So these are the first module form factors that give us real high density and the, we have the ASICs behind it to actually drive all those ports. So if you look what's happened in the very beginning we had a very low density. We had one port, maybe two port, four port cards, all using the CFP optic. 
and we got into a little bit higher density with maybe two to eight ports on a card uh, using CFP2. We had a bunch of different developments in terms of standards, and now finally we're getting to that mass market adoption. Del Oro, which is an industry research group, they predict that we're going to ship over 100 million ports in next year. So that's quite a bit of difference compared to the last couple years where we shipped tens of thousands of ports. So quite a few difference in uh, order of magnitude there. Some of you may have seen this slide before. Um, I've showed this a number of different times in uh, different pictures. But basically, the fundamental technology limitation that we have with 10 gig, I'm sorry, with 100 gig is the 10 gig signaling. So what we'd like to do is remove all the 10 gig signaling and use 25 or even in the future higher signaling in order to get us those 100 gig rates. The 10 gig signaling is used on the electrical side going into modules, and we also have some 10 gig signaling on the optical side coming out of the module. In terms of 100 gig developments, there's not a lot interesting that's going on. Actually, what's more interesting is what didn't happen, and I'll come back to that in a couple slides. Um, we had uh, a new, a new short-reach interface that now is uh, 4 times 25 gig over OM4 or OM3 multi-mode fiber. We have a uh, new signaling that was designed to make those optics modules possible. It's called CAWI4. It's used on the CFP2, CFP4, and QSFP28. The interesting thing is the things that didn't happen. Um, unfortunately, there could, the IEEE works on consensus. So if there's no consensus in the IEEE, then the project doesn't happen. There was a lot of desire to build a short reach 100 gig interface that was maybe 500 meters to two kilometers because that's missing in the current standards. And there were a bunch of different proposals on the table to use different modulations, but they couldn't come to agreement. So the project had to be dropped from the IEEE. In terms of the evolution, um, here's just a chart that shows you the different form factors and, and the different sizes. So you can see we started out with the CFP in 2010. Now 2015, we have QSFP28 and CFP4. So it's about a quarter of the size of the original optic. So just like we had for, uh, for 10 gig, I don't know if any of you remember in 2010 when uh, 10 gig first shipped, it had a, a fixed optic. And if you pulled out the line card, the laser was about this big. It was called a 300 pin MSA and it had a little tail that went from the optic, which was on the line card, to the port on the front of the line card. So we've come a lot way in 10 gig. We went from the fixed optics through ZenPak, X2, uh, XFP, and now we have SFP Plus for 10 gig. We're gonna see the same evolution for different ethernet speeds. So for 100 gig, we went from CFP, CFP2. Now, like I said, we have QSFP28 and CFP4. The differences, if you wanted to just explain it at a high level, is that the QSFP28 is primarily designed for short reaches. It supports 3.2, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 3.5 watts, and is likely only going to support a 10 kilometer reach. The CFP4 has a little more support for higher power, so we'll see a, a 40 kilometer reach in CFP4 at some point, I'm sure, and then um, probably some other different options, some, uh, some tunable optics or something like that in CFP4. Here's the, uh, what I call the eye candy slide. This is probably most interesting is how do these optics relate to my iPhone? So you can see the CFP is about as big as my iPhone 6. CFP2 about half the size and CFP4 again about a quarter of the size. And then I stacked a bunch of them on top of each other so you can see how the, they relate to uh, XFP for 10 gig as well. So we're getting down to that uh, XFP size that we know for 10 gig. This is where it gets a little crowded. Because there was no consensus in the IEEE, a bunch of different groups decided to do their own thing, and this is okay. The Ethernet architecture is designed so that it's open and people can, can make their own standard if they like. The problem is, is that uh, where we had, if you think back, we had uh, VHS and Betamax, there were two competing standards. Right now we have about uh, four to five or maybe even more competing standards. So this is gonna be a challenge because the market can only support very few standards, and the market is going to have to decide which one of these short reach interfaces they're going to support. We have different competing options. We have a, a parallel single mode fiber, which runs over a, a 12 pair single mode fiber. And we also have a couple different options that run over duplex fiber that use CWDM as the mechanism to multiplex the, the lasers. You can find out uh, a lot more about these different standards at each of the websites below on the table. Here's a technology reference slide that I'll skip over. That takes us to 400 gig, and this is where it gets complicated. 
There's a lot of challenges for 400 gig and beyond. Uh, with 100 gig, we were able to reuse a lot of 10 gig technology, as you saw in the, the previous couple of slides. With 400 gig, it's getting harder because of the, the rate of the, the signal increase. So given that we knew we needed terabit links at some point in core networks, but Ethernet at terabit speeds today is technically and economically impractical, we had to make a choice. So you might ask, well, how do we come up with 400 gig? I'd like to see one terabit Ethernet. Well, so would I. Terabit Ethernet sounds really cool. Um, I mean, just the word terabit sounds really cool. So unfortunately, the economics don't work out. So we could build a terabit Ethernet today. It would be so expensive and so unwieldy, the form factor would, would be huge that no one would buy it. So there's no point in building it if no one's going to buy it. So what the IEEE provides is an open forum where everyone can come together and make the best decision possible. Given where we are technically and what's feasible, 400 gig was chosen as the next speed because it's actually something that we can do today at a price that, that people can afford. So this task force started back in March of 2014. We're several years into it by now. We defined a bunch of different interfaces. There's a short reach interface, a couple different long reach interfaces. There's also a strong desire to support a breakout functionality, so a 400 gig to four times 100 gig breakout, just as we've seen a lot of success with 40 to four times 10 gig breakout. We want to want to support this feature. We just finished the first draft. Draft 1.0 is the, the big milestone. After that, it gets a lot easier. Um, there's a lot of discussion in the IEEE, and I'll show you on the next slide why. We had a lot of technology options that we had available, and it was difficult because everyone in the IEEE wants their technology to be used. So it was difficult to come to consensus, and that's why the schedule has slipped from March of 2017 to about December of 2017. So we probably won't see 400 gig standard interfaces on the market until late 2017 or even 2018. And this is why it's hard. Now with 10 gig and, and 1 gig, basically what you're doing is you're blinking a light. You're blinking it really, really fast, but you're still, you're just blinking a light. Uh, with 100 gig and, and 400 gig, you're actually doing complicated digital signal processing and those kind of things, which take, uh, they're a lot more complex than just blinking a light. Uh, in the IEEE, there were a number of different options that we had to consider because we want to go faster. And there's only four ways to go faster. You can increase your signaling speed, you can increase your modulation speed, you can increase the number of lambdas, or you can increase the number of fibers or some combination of these. So there are a bunch of different options in the IEEE. And what this has kind of led us to is that uh, NRZ was the encoding for Ethernet speeds up to 100 gig. And we've kind of found now that NRZ has only taken us so far, and we really have to go to a new encoding called PAM4 that gets us the economics and the distance that we want. So the new Ethernet speeds were chosen around this PAM4 encoding, and that's where all the, the different um, discussions were in the IEEE. We already have some 400 gig modules that are available. Again, we have a first generation, second generation, and we'll see some sort of third generation. For a short range interface, we have something called the CDFP. Style 3 is specifically designed for Ethernet. For longer range interfaces, there's a multi-mode and a single mode version of something called the CFP8. This was just demonstrated a couple months ago at an optical conference. It's about the same size as a CFP2, but uh, slightly smaller. And then in a couple years around you know, 2017 or 18, uh, we'll have some, some new um, 400 gig module. And then around 2020, or maybe sometime after that, we'll have a 100 gigabit lane, and that'll give us another uh, smaller 400 gig module. And when we have 100 gigabit signaling, that's really when Ethernet at terabit speeds become feasible. It just doesn't make sense to try and um, use 25 or, or 50 gig signaling to do a terabit Ethernet. So then there's another uh, couple other things going on in the IEEE. If you remember from the first slide that I showed, there is a possibility for a 50 and 100 gig Ethernet. There are going to be three new study groups introduced in the IEEE next month. There is talk about a 50 gigabit Ethernet. So this would be a single lane 50 gig Ethernet. And that could also turn into a 200 gigabit Ethernet. So it'll be determined next month if that project is actually approved. And there's also a new project to start a longer reach 25 gig Ethernet interface. If you remember from the 25 gig slides, the farthest distance that we have defined today is 100 meters on multi-mode fiber. Clearly, there's interest in going longer on single-mode fiber. So as far as uh, evolution futures, as I've 
told you, Ethernet is evolving again over the 40 years to meet new, in market, uh, new market requirements, diverse market requirements. We have new speeds for new applications and kind of the thing that we've learned as we went from 10 meg to 100 meg to gig to 10 gig to 100 gig is that we used to have uh, a request to do um, you know, 10 times the rate increase for three times the cost. So 10 gig was supposed to be 10 times faster than one gig at three times the cost. 100 gig was 10 times faster than 10 gig, but the cost was not three times as much as 10 gig. And when it started out, it was probably as much as 10 gig. And then um, you know, we see about probably three to four costs now for 10 times 10 gig versus 100 gig ports. So it's finally coming down with those new optics that I mentioned. But the current economic solutions turn out to be four or eight times the highest lane rate. So we're going to see a four times increase or maybe an eight times increase. So that's why we went from 100 gig to 400 gig and not from 100 gig to terabit ethernet. And then as I said, just on the last slide, we have new technology based around 50 gig signaling. That's going to be the basis for a new generation of speeds around 50 and 200 gig ethernet. So summary of everything that we talked about, two and a half and five gig ethernet is coming for cat five. E, CAT6 applications, and wireless. 10 gig is, is pretty mature now. There's not really anything new to say about 10 gig. 25 gig is coming for server and top of rack applications. 40 gig is pretty widely deployed now, widely available. It's popular for a four times 10 gig breakout. We're in second generation technology on 100 gig with CFP2, and now shipping CFP4, QSFP28. 400 gig is on its way. We'll see it in about 2018. And some sort of ethernet at terabit speeds is probably coming after 2020. I don't think it'll be one terabit ethernet. It'll likely be 1.6 terabit ethernet if we use four times 400 gig uh, as a basis for that math. Here's a bunch of information on the IEEE and the optics MSAs that you can go look up. And uh, I have uh, lots and lots of reference slides are next. So there's about um, at least 10 more slides or 15 more slides that come afterwards, but I don't have time to go into those. So uh, at this point, are there any questions, uh, any comments? Usually someone yells at me, uh, which you're, you're welcome to do. But it's, it's not required. <laughs> any questions for Greg? Okay, es war alles klar. Okay, that wasn't the question. Okay. Also, danke schön. Okay, thanks a lot.